So if you're having trouble hearing what compression is doing, hearing frequencies, hearing when plugins are A-B'd, the befores and afters in mixing tutorials and music production tutorials, then this lesson is for you. So why can't I hear X? Why can't I hear compression frequencies when plugins are turned on and off during mixing tutorials? Here's what it could possibly be. Could be that the mixing tutorial just isn't that great. It could be that your environment isn't dialed in, right? You don't have acoustic treatment in your room. You're listening on open speakers and there are frequency buildups and resonances that are happening for, and preventing you from hearing accurately. It could be that you legit have broken ears. Like you could, uh, if, if you're actually worried about uh, hearing damage, stop looking for internet answers and go and get checked out. Go and see your doctor uh, to really kind of nail that down, right? So those are things that it could possibly be. Here's what it is most likely. It's that you just don't have the experience with critical listening, right? Your ears are unseasoned. So what is critical listening? Critical listening, and I've got this little lightning bolt. Ah, that's the skill, critical listening. Critical listening, the ability to accurately hear and identify the characteristics of a sound, right? So frequencies, dynamics, panning, perception of space and depth, etc. Who suffers from poor critical listening skills? Noobs, people who are unexperienced or just kind of entering this game uh, and, and just getting started with music production. Veteran musicians, right? Critical listening is different than having musical experience or performing experience. So I have students that come into the program who are, you know, 20, 30 year veterans, veteran musicians who have been performing live or playing music or they have music degrees and things like that. Uh, and they have music skills and music experience, but they don't have critical listening experience. So these are two different things. And hobbyists and side hustlers, people who are actually veterans at doing music production and mixing and mastering and audio manipulation and editing and all of that. Even people who have been doing this as a hobby for years and years, people who have been doing this and getting paid for it for years and years still suffer from poor critical listening skills, right? They're getting by, they, they know enough to get by, but these skills may not be sharpened or honed as best they could be. They still might be having trouble hearing some of the nuances of audio. And basically, <clears throat> No one is safe. <laughs> so how can you improve your critical listening skills? Right. And I've got a chart here. And on this side of the chart, we've got the slowest way that most people do. And on this side of the chart, or the line, the scale, I guess this is a scale. On this side of the scale, we've got the fastest way to improve your critical listening skills that hardly anybody does, right? Just very, the very few, right? We got the 1% over here. So let's take a look at this chart. Let's kind of fill it out and see how you can improve. One, over the shoulder learning, right? YouTube videos, books. Um, well, not really books. I just have a book icon here to indicate that this is learning, right? So watching other tutorials, watching other mixers, watching other producers, and listening to what they're doing inside of their tutorials, all right? We've got practice, right? Just repeating the process, practical application, doing the music production process or the mixing process or the mastering process over and over and over and, and over and over again uh, and, until you've really built up those critical listening skills. This is a great way to do it. I'm a big proponent of finishing projects and just going through the process over and over. That's a big part of what I teach. And third is specific training, right? This is intentional training for building up 
your critical listening skills. And I've got a dumbbell here because it's, it's like training in the gym, right? Like targeting specific muscle groups and things like that. In this case, you're targeting your ears and you're training them to become better so that ultimately you can be better at your sport or better in this case, <laughs> your sport would be music production, right? Your overall skill. Right? So you're narrowing in on individual skills, critical listening skills, so that you can be better at what you do holistically. And you can see here that these things, where they're placed on the timeline is kind of interesting, right? This is the slowest way. This is what most people do here on this side of the scale. Just watch YouTube videos and take courses and things like that. In the middle, we've got practical application. Less people do that, but this is a quicker way to increase your listening, or I should say increase, improve your listening skills. And then finally, uh, all the way to this side, this is what almost nobody does, but this is also the very fastest way to improve your critical listening skills, right? And for most people, this is the missing piece. Again, you could be doing these things for years and years and years and years, and it takes, and you can get there. Like you can get to the point where you'll be able to hear a, a frequency or a range of frequencies and just be able to tell dead on, okay, that's around this area. Fine, just from doing these things. But you can get there much, much faster if you do some intentional, specific training, right? This is the missing piece. So how do you train your ears? Let's talk about it. A little bit every day. Okay. Frequency is key. So it's better and more effective for you to train your ears a little bit every single day, uh, rather than doing a whole bunch of ear training on a Monday and then waiting three days and then doing a whole bunch of ear training on a Friday, right? These larger chunks, it's just not as effective. It's not optimal. It's not ideal. So frequency really is key here a little bit every, even if it's just five minutes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every single day, that's going to establish and build a stronger kind of like neural pathways. And it's going to sharpen that skill much quicker right. and keep it quick. Keep it consistent. It doesn't have to be like this long, like 90 minute, two hour kind of marathon thing. Uh, just keep it short to the point, get your training done, get it out of the way, then move on with the rest of your day. So here's an example routine, daily ear training routine example. Here we go. Start with drills and then move into analysis. Don't worry, we're going to break both of these things down. Total time, 10 to 30 minutes. You don't need to be spending, again, you don't need to be spending 90 minutes on this stuff. Uh, very, very little bit. Short, quick, uh, uh, consistent every single day. So let's talk about what this actually looks like uh, in practice, drills. Websites and apps, things like soundgym.co. Okay, this is my favorite. Uh, let me show you what this looks like actually. So this is it. This is soundgym.co. I'm not an affiliate or anything like that. I just think this is the best one out there. There are a whole bunch of other ones, but basically what you do is you sign up for a free account and you can do like a premium account too, but the free account has uh, a few games. It's got this pan girl game that tests your left to right listening skills, this peak master game, which is frequencies and then DB King, which is dynamics, right? Volume levels. So even if you just stick to the free version of soundgym.co, and these three training games do these every single day, dude, you're going to be 90% above where the rest of the people in this game are. Right? So that's the one I recommend for you to do your drills on. Um, it, if for some reason you don't want to use soundgym.co, then just Google it, Google ear training. There are a whole bunch of programs out there. There are apps, websites, and things like that. What I would recommend is that you do this training at your station, 
Like do it in your home studio at the computer and the desk that you use for music production in the environment that you use for music production. Okay. And uh, the reason for that is different environments, you know, different rooms respond differently when sound, <laughs> when, when sound comes out of speakers, All right? That's the simple, that's the very simple answer. So we want to make sure that the place you're training your ears is the place that you're going to be doing the critical listening is the place that you're doing the work. If that makes sense. And part two of your daily training analysis. So first remove all distractions, make sure you're in a quiet place. You're uh, alone, right? Your phone's turned off, pick a reference. So pick a track by an artist who is similar to you or an artist who you just really love and really enjoy who you might use as a reference for your productions and take notes on what you hear. Just listen to how the mix actually sounds and how all the instruments are playing together, so on and so forth. And I've actually got a worksheet that you can use for this, right? So I'm just going to go through and explain a little bit about each one of these categories here. So what you would do is you would pick a song, just write in the song and the artist right in here, and then think about the balance of the track, right? And when I say balance, I mean volume balance and panning balance too, right? So what instruments are really up front in the mix? What instruments are behind in the mix or, or set further back in the mix, right? Where are things panned in the arrangement? What's panned to the left? What's panned to the right? How well balanced is the mix? Right? Think about things like that and just write down your thoughts inside of that box. Tone. Think about tone. You know, what's bright in the mix? What's darker in the mix? Is the mix bright overall or is it a darker mix overall? Are the vocals nice and crisp and up front? Uh, are the uh, synthesizers really bright or are they darker? Are they kind of pushed back in the mix or is it a pad that kind of lays down as a bed across the entire stereo spectrum? Or, or is it a keyboard that's a little bit brighter and rhythmic that's <laughs> meant to bounce back and forth between left and right speakers, right? Keep in mind all of these kind of really brighter and darker, but this is frequency based. Right. So think about brightness, think about darkness. I think those are the two kind of, if we want to really boil it down and simplify things. Dynamics, think about how punchy things are, right? How compressed is the mix overall? Is there any obvious compression happening here? And it's okay if you can't hear a lot of these things right off the bat, just write down whatever's just kind of coming to mind, right? The idea is that you're practicing and you're intentionally listening for these things in context with the rest of the mix, right? Space. What kind of reverbs are being used as in how much reverb is being used? Uh, where is delay being used in the mix? Is there a really wet mix? Are the vocals really wet or are they really dry, you know, and kind of flat? Um, are there delay effects or reverb effects on the guitars or on the synthesizers or on the drums? How is space used? What's kind of like the sense of depth? Maybe we've got an upfront vocal and the drums are, uh, the kick and the snare is really up front, but then we've got some keyboards and synths that seem a little bit further back. Write all of those thoughts down here. Okay. And notes. This is anything else that you hear in your reference tracks right? Arrangement things, uh, song structure things, if tones and special effects are used and things like risers and downfalls and how the overall feel of the mix changes, anything that comes to mind, you can just write in this box here. You can go ahead and pause this video and just take a screen cap of this chart and you can use this for your actual exercises for your reference analysis for your training or you can just make a google sheet of this chart I and mean, it's very it's five it's six columns just write it in there just type it in song balance tone dynamic space and notes add whatever other columns you want to add but i think this is a good place to start 
and then just fill it out. Uh, you could also just do this very quickly, like on a notepad, right? So I might just rent song, balance, tone, dynamics, space, and other notes. Just write it across the top of the pad or this way, it doesn't matter, right? And then just take notes, like physically write things down. I always find things kind of like absorb into my brain a little bit better when I physically write things down on a notepad. So you could do that as well. So here's your prescription. Just kind of like a recap here. 10 to 30 minutes of ear training per day, drills plus at least one reference analysis, right? So maybe this looks like you logging into soundgym.co and doing all three games. And after that, you fire up Spotify or whatever streaming service and listen to a song and do your reference analysis. And that's it, right? Should take you no longer than 10 to 30 minutes. And I would challenge you to commit to this because not, like 90% of people who watch this video just aren't going to do this. <laughs> it's like, let's be honest, right? But for those of you who do, if you commit to this and make a habit of this for the next 90 days, and you will be astounded at what you're going to be able to hear, right? You're going to hear completely differently. You're going to watch your you're going to watch your critical listening skills explode. <laughs> so I guarantee it. And that's from me, Dr. Jake from Musician on a Mission. <laughs> no, that's not funny. Okay, fair enough. If you've done ear training in the past or you now plan on doing ear training moving forward because you watched this lesson, I want to hear about it. Let me know in the comments. As usual, like the video. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.